Hello everyone, I am Be Better Gamer and welcome to Be Better Gamer Wrestling, the channel dedicated to wrestling video games fueled by my love, passion, and obsession for them. I am playing Virtual Wrestling 2 on the N64, my favorite wrestling video game of all time. I am bringing you another created wrestler. I am bringing you John Moxley. That's right, John Moxley, the former Dean Ambrose. This summer, we saw him wrestle as part of the G1 Climax, New Japan's annual tournament. Another one of my favorite things in pro wrestling, the G1 Climax. I look forward to it every year. And he had a pretty great showing, so I figured I would make him in Virtual Pro Wrestling 2. I'm making him in the vanilla version of Virtual Wrestling 2, the Japanese version, but if you check the description below, the full call is typed out in a nice spreadsheet. You can use the vanilla version of Virtual Wrestling 2, the Virtual Wrestling 2 translation patch. You could probably even make him in Virtual Wrestling 2 Freem Edition, but let's go ahead and jump right into it. For head, I went with number two and uh, zero skin tone for the body as well face i went with face 70 i went kind of bold with the face but i think it works there's other faces you could choose as well and for hair i went with two and then the brown hair front hair we went with front hair 75 you could also do the shaved head but i like going with the uh, regular hair for this one and then facial hair 22 i do wish the facial hair was a little bit lighter um, body size, we go with one, skin tone zero again. A20, he had sort of like a mixed martial arts kind of look when he left WWE and keep the color black. For entrance attire, I actually gave him the leather jacket, A8. You know, he came in with that very cool Mox jacket, and we'll talk a little bit about that later on. He wore an elbow pad on the right side for the majority of his matches. I went with elbow pad number two. Knee pads 13. Both the elbow pad and knee pads just make them black. And then for feet, we went with D8. He wore these sneakers, these shoes that have been, you know, seen throughout the years of Japanese pro wrestling and mixed martial arts. So I thought that was very cool. And they're in the game. So that's awesome. For the second outfit, I just took off the knee pad, I mean the elbow pad. <laughs> you know, he didn't really, he hasn't really done too many different outfits since leaving WWE and I tried to stick with outfits that he's used in New Japan and AEW here. I went with his long pants, his sort of like jean slash camo pants he wears, um, D9 and make it black. You can also keep the leather jacket. You can also give him the vest if you want for his entrance attire because he does alternate sometimes. Sometimes he wears his vest. And then D9, sort of the camo pants that are kind of gray. Um, you know, he, I, I think he wears different pants. I'm not sure if he's wearing the same pants. Sometimes the pants seem lighter, sometimes they don't. So, you know, sometimes they look black and like white. Sometimes they look gray and white. So I just went with both here. Um, you'd let me know if, if, I'm, if I'm seeing things wrong or if he is wearing just the same pants each time because he's worn the pants primarily when he's done matches in AEW on the indies. But in New Japan, he had the, you know, the sort of MMA type gear where he's just wearing the short tights and the knee pads. And that's it. Very simple call for John Moxley, a.k.a. the former Dean Ambrose. I did make Dean Ambrose a long time ago in WWF No Mercy. You can click on the description below and I'll have a link to my Dean Ambrose call for WWF No Mercy. As well as this, my Naito call. For Virtual Wrestling 2, Naito obviously is not in Virtual Wrestling 2. This is another call that I made that I featured on my channel. Make sure you check the description for both those calls as well as the full link to the full call for John Moxley. But we're going to jump into a match. I'm going to talk a little bit more about what I did with the call and also how I felt about Moxley being in the G1. If you like this call, please let me know in the comment section below. Like, comment, subscribe. You've been on YouTube before. You know what to do. I also stream Virtual Wrestling 2 as well as other wrestling games on my Twitch channel. Twitch.tv slash BeBetterGamer. Again, a link in the description below if you want to follow. And if you want to drop a sub. If you have an Amazon Prime subscription, you get a free Twitch Prime sub every month. I'd greatly appreciate it if you send one my way. It really helps me grow not only on YouTube, but on Twitch as well. So I can bring you more cause 
like John Moxley and Naito and everyone else on my channel and more wrestling videos that I do. So Moxley in the G1 was very surprising. I didn't expect him to show up in New Japan, honestly. Like, I think when it was announced that he was leaving WWE, I figured he would go to AEW, maybe bounce around the indie scene for a little bit. I thought it was even a possibility if he showed up on Impact or something and go and went and fought Sammy Callahan and stuff like that and OVE. Um, but he didn't. He showed up in New Japan. His first match was at New Japan after leaving um, WWE. It was at the Best of the Super Juniors Finals where he won the IWGP uh, US Heavyweight Championship from Juice Robinson. And there was promos playing throughout the Super Junior Tournament that someone was coming to basically murder Juice Robinson. <laughs> That's what the promos were like. And a lot of people thought it was like, you know, it's going to be a British wrestler because the guy on his jacket had like the um, Union Jack flag and things like that. But it ended up being Mox. And that was the name we got. And that was John Moxley. And it was revealed right after he left WWE. He won the title from Juice, and then at Dominion, he defended it against... Uh, well, he didn't defend his title, no. He just fought Shota Umino, a young lion, beat Shota, and then after he beat Shota, he declared his intention to be in the G1, and that blew me away. I was completely surprised. I was predicting that we would probably get Kenta in the G1, which we did, which was also awesome, and if you watch the G1 and how that all went down with Kenta, and Shibata, that was my favorite part of the G1. But he was over in B Block and he had some really good matches in the G1. You know, he started off strong, winning a most of his matches. Um, I thought Naito was going to be one of the people to give him his first loss, but he actually went undefeated all the way up and through Naito. He beat Tai Chi, he beat Cobb, he beat Ishii, he beat Shingo Takaji, and he beat Naito. His first two matches, you know, Tai Chi and Cobb, they were pretty good, but Ishii is where it really picked up, I felt like. You know, Moxley and Ishii just had great chemistry right off the bat, went after each other. Fantastic match, probably my favorite match that Moxley had in the G1. His match with Takaji was great, his match with Naito was really good, very surprising. I thought Naito was going to beat him, he didn't. And then he went on a losing streak after losing to Toriyano, Toriyano the... Uh, the bracket killer, man. He beat Moxley, then he lost to Jay White, then he lost to Goto, and then he lost to Robinson in another great match, a follow-up from their match when they first fought in New Japan. There we go with the double arm DDT. So I gave him the double arm DDT as his strong grapple, his beat down strong grapple. That's the Death Rider, you know, and then he does the sort of impaler like Death Rider. So I gave him the impaler DDT. But he doesn't double underhook the arms there. You're just going to have to use your imagination. And that's kind of what I went for with his finisher, his moves. His moveset is not too much different from what I did in WWF No Mercy. I did change a few things around. You saw I, did the, I had the um, Texas Cloverleaf added in there. I gave him a few other submission moves. A few other, you know, technical moves that he did in New Japan. It was great to see Moxley not only bring back his like hardcore short sort of brawling style but also mix it up with a lot of technical moves and submissions uh, he was very much a hybrid wrestler during the G1 climax which is making me very excited to see what he does when he goes to AEW officially we've already seen him wrestle Joey Janela at Fighter Fest in a hardcore match but at double or nothing he's gonna be facing Kenny Omega that's going to be a match I'm going to keep my eye on. So let me know what you think again on John Moxley in Virtual Wrestling 2, as well as John Moxley in general since he's left WWE in the comments below. Once again, I am Be Better Gamer. Check out my other calls and let's plays. Follow me on social media and twitch.tv. And until next time, you know what to do. Keep watching all the wrestling. Thank you. Take it easy, everyone.